back. Well, back here at the cabin, enjoying two weeks off grid. It's been lovely. Uh, just up here uh, on the deck here, and I'll show you a second what I'm doing and what special thing I have to add to my breakfast this morning. But I just want to give you guys a tour around the camp now in the summertime. Uh, we've had a bit of sun, a bit of rain. Um, it's been pretty good, actually. Really nice, relaxing trip. So let's show you what I've been up to. As always, making breakfast here at the cabin. And this is my little setup. There's that table from Princess Otto that I've had. My water stacked up. And I've got my, my griddle set up, the Blackstone, and just this old school Coleman propane stove. So I'm getting some bacon ready. And uh, since the uh, quail are here, I'll show you guys those in a second. Um, got fresh quail eggs every day. Take a look at that. Um, beautiful eggs, eh? So uh, basically I just... Um, pan fry these guys. You can boil them. They're a bit of a pain to peel. So uh, yeah, let's get some breakfast started. If you have quail and you've um, got some quail eggs, really good to get these scissors to uh, to cut the tops off. Um, just so much easier than cracking them into a pan and pouring out the contents. Just get these scissors. They're really cheap on Amazon. There you go. That's what the scissors do. You just pour out the egg. Royce wants some breakfast. So there you go. Just kind of pours them out. They're kind of bluish on the inside. That's neat. All right, so basically about four or five of these eggs equals one chicken egg. So I kind of just uh, crack them all out and put them in the pan. And there we go. There's our eight eggs there. Let's just kind of make this, then I kind of flip them over. Delicious. Put a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. I know many of you were asking what the quail eggs taste like, and they pretty much taste like chicken eggs. I find them fairly rich, though. They do have a lot more yolk um, than egg white. But I don't know, if you put me in a blind taste test, I really wouldn't know the difference. As for the meat, a few of you asked that question as well. Um, the birds, it's like a darker meat. Uh, very, very tasty. Not too gamey, I find. Although I do brine um, the, uh, the quail before uh, cooking at 500 Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes. And I don't cook them with the skins on. I just put some herbs on top. So they can be a little bit dry. So you may want to leave the skin on or uh, put a little bit of mayo or something like that to retain the moisture. But very tasty meat, very tasty eggs. Well, I think I'll head inside now and have my breakfast, a little oatmeal, bacon and eggs. It's starting to rain out here, so it'll be a camp day today. Uh, later on, when it clears up, I'll take you guys out to see what's been going on. Well, let's uh, head out around the camp, take a look at what's been going on, and I'll take you in the forest and see what's on the forest floor. So yes, the girls are here. All eight of the female quail are here. Having a grand old time. I made this cage from quarter inch hardware cloth and used some hog rings, basically. You can see right here, um, just to clip the pieces together. It's about two feet tall, three and a half feet long, about two feet deep or so. So yeah, it's got that little door I put in the front. So they're having a grand old time. They uh, like to play around in their little nesting boxes, which they use, you know, for their bathing and just just hanging out. <laughs> A lot of them like to sunbathe in the morning. Uh, at night, they go into the shower house. Um, just predator protection, really. During the day, they're always outside. Not had any issues so far. Um, but they really enjoy their view. And generally, they seem pretty happy. One thing about these guys is they do love gypsy moths and they do love mosquitoes. So um, if I accidentally left a bunch of uh, you know, the window or the door open to the shower house, they will, uh, the, the shower house will be absolutely clean of insects that fly, of course, um, by the morning. So they have a really good app. Oh, one just ate something back there. I don't know if you saw that. Um, mosquitoes are pretty bad after the rain. Um, so, uh, yeah, they've been enjoying some insects this afternoon. There's the bird there at the feeder with the red leg band. That's the one that had the eye that you can see that was injured and it's wide open. She's doing really well. Yeah, they're much happier. And they love to hang out. Especially she with the red leg band there. She likes to sit near the front in the sun and sunbathe every morning. Just want to show you, this is a fresh egg out of Karen, the, uh, the Italian quail uh, that has the green leg band. They let out a little squeal when they're going to lay the eggs. So I knew it was coming and then boom, here it is. Isn't it cool? I put some fresh shavings in their um, little nest boxes there and they were playing. In there and then I heard the telltale squeal and boom here we go 
the girls lay eggs between five and eight o'clock at night. Um, so uh, this is about later in the afternoon now. So uh, we're getting we're getting a roll here. Um, the quail put a bloom on the eggs, so they have a really good shelf life. Actually, I don't uh, put mine in the fridge up here at the cabin. Um, you know, they stay they can stay a really long time on the countertop, and of course a lot longer in the fridge. Uh, and I don't wash them either, so their their cage is very clean. Um, so this is a nice warm egg, fresh out of Karen. So <laughs> how cool is that? We'll have uh, eggs again for breakfast tomorrow. A few adjustments to the shower house have been made. Um, there's a big setup here just to kind of warm the water before it goes into the shower house for daily showers. Um, it's been fairly rainy the last little while, so the barrels have been full. Uh, the barrel was down to just below that little line there. It's been pretty rainy the uh, last little while. Um, the barrel just using for washing and showering. It gotten down to just below the last ring at the bottom there. But uh, since the rains, it's been pretty good. After the rain today, it's just down to about, uh, about half full. So that's awesome. And new this year is uh, an additional rain barrel. So uh, it's a little bit higher than the other one there. So uh, it's nearly full and it runs off the front eaves trough of the shower house. So it can be um, plumbed into the other tank uh, if we need it. In the shower house, what's new um, is gotten rid of the old Coolatron and made uh, retrofitted a lifetime Walmart cooler. This is the Yeti knockoff. Uh, took the pieces out of the Coolatron and put it into, you know, cut out the top of the lifetime cooler and it now runs off of the power bank there. So let's take a look. So we just open up the uh, clips here. And there you see, there's the fan. And uh, basically heat is removed from the cooler and there's ice at the bottom. So it does a really good job. Stays about one degree by the ice and about six or seven degrees near the top. So pretty good for a cheap Walmart cooler with Coolatron, uh, Coolatron hardware on the top. Here's the new saw at the cabin. It's a Makita. You can see the model number there, EA4300F. It's one of their, uh, you know, small acreage farm type saws. So it's working really well. Starts on the first pull. Um, it was used today to take down about 50 pine in the field eight-year-old pine stand uh, they're, they're growing up really thick and bushy and they're all starting to touch each other so got to thin it out periodically believe it or not that saw took many months to get here with the pandemic it was hard to uh, lots of things were on short order so I think I ordered that back in October didn't get it till May so uh, yeah did lots of work today earned its keep here's the old mushroom farm um, you can see there's some other little mushrooms uh, sprouting it's like little polypores off of this log, um, not exactly what I'm looking for. However, um, if you look carefully on a few of my plugs, you can see a little bit of mycelium. I'm just gonna try to find one for you. Um, you can see a little bit of the mycelium uh, forming on a few of them here. So if you look there around here, you can kind of see a little bit of mycelium around that plug, a little bit around that one. So I'm optimistic in time uh, that my little mushroom farm will will take hold. Again, the um, Oyster mushrooms didn't even come up in the forest that I could find around here this spring. So uh, uh, maybe this fall we'll start to see something. Weather's not been too bad, but very, very hazy. Smoke is in the air. There's a lot of fires in northwestern Ontario, and we're getting um, all the smoky haze from it. So some days the sky is really hazy with uh, an orange sun that's basically hidden behind the smoke. Today, not too bad, but very smoky air smell. I'm doing a lot of trail work, which means sort of pruning the pine and then trying to clear out as much as this as can. Still a lot of work to go. Of course, with the harvesting of the branches of the white pine, comes time to dry some needles for tea in the winter. Really high in vitamin C, really delicious um, tea. So they're going to be getting some of those needles very soon. My jack pine have survived, by and large, the uh, gypsy moth infestation. I uh, manually picked off a bunch. That one in the front there died a long time ago, but, uh, ooh, thank goodness. Look over here, a success story of the field. There is a monarch caterpillar and a big one at that. 
Look at it. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. Eating away at the milkweed. You know, the monarchs have been doing really well in the field. Um, they're breeding in the field. I've seen a huge increase in the population of monarch. And there's the next generation right there. How cool is that? There's an adult monarch now, just the sun's peeking out. So nice to see these guys here. One thing I discovered this year is the choke cherries. Well, very meager harvest this year, really not too much. It looked like there was going to be a lot in the spring, uh, but they were attacked by the gypsy moths, and I think the birds pretty much finished off the choke cherries. Look at very little on the shrubs in the field here. Oh well, I still have some from previous year's harvest, so uh, we'll let the trees regenerate. One thing that is doing well are the blackberries. Here's my little blackberry patch. Still green though, but look at all the blackberries in here. Let's go back and take a look. Still green, but there. <laughs> so uh, lots to come. Pretty looking forward to that. Uh, as long as the rain keeps up. Last year I was teased there was lots of berries on the bush and then um, they kind of dried up because it was very droughty late summer and into the early fall. So really, really hoping that uh, things stay nice and wet after all these rainstorms. I want to get these nice blackberries. And as I walk along further on the trail, yeah, it's going to be a good year. Look at those ones. Already pink everywhere you look. Blackberries. And uh, you can take a look at the leaves here. So they got those little uh, five leaflets and the very long fruit. If you look down here is a raspberry, so tasty. I'm taking you down one of my older trails I haven't worked in a while, but you can see that there's been some trails through there just from deer and stuff like that. So they like to use these old trails. They kind of help me keep them open. Oh, there's another raspberry down there. A few little larch coming up. It's trying to grow in a bit, which is just fine. Here, of course, is some beautiful wild rose. Lovely. And the blackberries at the back. Take a look by that little break in the clouds there. There's two eagles. Really tiny. There we go. There's some eagles right there. Love seeing these guys soaring high above the field. Wish I could get even a closer shot for you guys, but this is what we got. Chantrelles are some of the easiest mushrooms to find. Oh, nice. Look at that. Beauty. Nice big one over here, too. Remember, there's always more than one. Keep your eyes peeled. Oh, that's ooh, a, little bit of, a little bit of slug damage there. Not terrible, though. Gorgeous. Look at those uh, false gills. Lovely apricot smell, too. And there's some ghost pipe. I've never really tried it. Some people say it's like white asparagus. There you go. One of the beautiful things you can see in a summer forest floor. And of course, the bunch berries are ripe. Looks like the grouse have been at them. Um, these are really good uh, pectin source if you're looking for that, making jams and jellies. So uh, lots of them here. Whoop, there's a little frog. Lots of them right ready and ripe for picking. Of course, while out in the foray, I'm doing a bit of surveillance for invasive species, and uh, we definitely got the gypsy moths breeding right now. So I know you guys saw in my last video um, about gypsy moth trap. Well, take a look. These are the females. They don't fly, so they don't get caught in the trap. You basically have to destroy them uh, and destroy these egg masses here. So this is uh, next year's crop. I can only pray we have a really, really cold winter that may help us um, reduce the gypsy moth population for next year, but uh, not looking very encouraging. I'm going to show you guys the gypsy moths. All those little white moths you see flying around, those are the gypsy moths. Those are the guys that... Uh, you know, their caterpillars destroyed the tree canopy in a lot of Ontario, so there's a lot of them around here. Um, the traps I have at home for them work really well. Man, I'd have to set up a lot in this area to try to catch them all. Got 170 acres here, so need two to four traps. 
per acre or so. Oh boy, it'll be tough. Royce is doing some logging. You gonna bring it or what? Earlier I showed you my logs for my mushroom farm and the oyster mushrooms aren't up yet. This is one of my trees that I flagged um, that usually gives me oyster mushrooms in the spring and sometimes the summertime. Um, yeah, so I uh, don't see any evidence that they actually came out this year. It was so dry and droughty. Um, they weren't out this year. Thank goodness the chanterelles are good. We're foraging in some thick stuff now, but look down here. Oh yeah. These are nice and fresh. I figured I'd get them about get my eye poked. Oh yeah, look at over there too. <laughs> oh, these are great. This uh, summer, the race has been to get to them before the bugs get to them. So let's take a look. Oh, not terrible. Not terrible at all. A little bit of stuff, but not too bad. Nice veins. Into the basket she goes. That one's perfect. No complaints there. Well, I'll be. I forgot I had this trail cam set up here. I wonder what it's captured. See behind me what a hot mess it is in here. It's a lot of balsam fir, some just early successional trees in here. Get some uh, birch. Bugs are really bad. But you know, this area, you know, give it 20 years, it'll be transformed. Mature forest eventually. He's getting some sticks, doing his job. So, you know, not everything is just beautiful in the forest. It can be a bit of a mess, but sometimes you have to go through that kind of stuff to transform into something more beautiful in the future. Kind of like us in our lives. Pretty good start. So I'll direct you guys over here. Beautiful spot. He's meditate here. Sun is... Uh, just trying to get through that smoky haze. Just sitting on a rock here, enjoying it. Taking a pause during my foraging. So nice. So I'm getting out of this area here. I just want to show you so these scaly vase chanterelles. They come up in this spot every year. So we'll take a look at them. Very chanterelle-y, but they have a, a different appearance to them. These are not edible. Um, but they're beautiful. They have those false gills, but you can see that they're kind of an interesting shape to them. These are old, but uh, these are not the chanterelles that I'm after. These will give you a little bit of a stomach upset, so we're not going to eat those. Now here's one of my most favorite mushrooms, but unfortunately we're too late. Uh, this is a hedgehog fungus. Um, it's a toothed fungus. One of the most delicious mushrooms I find, but look at that slug hat at it. So. Better luck next time. I don't find there's too many of them this year. We'll see. Well, it sure is nice to be back at the cabin and having some of my foraged mushrooms. So here I've got the chanterelles with a bit of uh, shaved garlic in there and a bit of oil. It's going to be delicious. They have a bit of an apricot type flavor, but they taste so good with garlic. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's adventure around the cabin. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment down below and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take care.